So if you have a growth plate fracture and there's a lot of displacement, usually I find they tend not to do so well with that type of fracture. One, the fracture is closer to a joint. They're physeal fractures, so they're at the edges of the bone. They're along the metaphysis, epiphysis of the, of the bone, not the diaphysis. So the muscle pull is no longer there to try and keep things aligned. So physeal fractures do tend to be a little bit more complicated to manage uh, in these young animals without being able to properly repair them. If you don't have access to a referral center, you're, this is not an option for your patient, and you have a relatively, I'm gonna say, minimally displaced fracture, physeal fracture, uh, I would try conservative management in those patients for sure. And that would be with a splint to try and immobilize the bone pieces as best as possible until healing can occur. Now, because they have open growth plates, they're young, so they will heal quickly, which is a clear advantage with these, with these patients. The only other physeal fracture um, that I want to talk about would be a capital physeal fracture of the femoral head, so proximal femur, so a slip capitis. And um, I find without surgical repair of these, they tend not to do very well. Again, closed reduction under fluoro would be the way to do it. Or a femoral head and neck excision in these animals. That will do a great job, and especially if they're young and you get that post-op movement and rehabilitation going quickly, they tend to do well with that. So that would be another option for a physeal fracture in a young patient. Let's have a look at different Salter-Harris fractures. Here we have a distal radius Salter Harris 1, which is minimally displaced. Now we opted to surgically repair it, but that would have been a good one uh, if surgical repair were not an option on which to do conservative management. Here is a nasty Salter Harris 1 of the distal tibia. There's a lot of displacement there, and this one does require surgical repair. Even a closed reduction, although not impossible, becomes a little bit difficult with that very small distal fragment. Not a good one for conservative management. This next fracture is quite common. It is, in this case, a Salter Harris one of the distal femur. We see it often. In this particular case, it is minimally displaced. And although I would choose to repair it, it is one that I would not hesitate to recommend conservative management if surgery were not available. More often than not, these are quite displaced fr fractures, like this one that we have here. Um, and surgical repair really tends to be the better option for these. Again, these are quite common fractures and even more displacement than this is not unusual to see. Here's one little guy that did not have surgery and the fracture healed on its own and the malunion and maluse of the limb were quite evident. A Salter Harris 1 or 2 fracture of the proximal tibia is not too uncommon. The one we're seeing here is a Salter Harris 2. Um, and they usually are accompanied with this rocking back, as we call it, displacement of the entire tibial plateau. Their displacement often doesn't appear to be excessive on radiographs. But I haven't found that conservative management of these fractures to be very successful. So I do always recommend surgical repair of the Salter-Harris proximal tibial fractures. The prognosis for a physeal fracture with surgical repair is excellent. And I know when we teach and what's in the textbooks is you gotta worry about p potential angular limb deformities and 
issues with growth from that now damaged growth plate. Those things are not untrue. They're very true, but they don't happen that commonly. If you have a patient that has a physeal fracture, encourage them to be referred to somebody who can repair that fracture because the prognosis is excellent. The repairs when done acutely are usually pretty straightforward. I'm so sorry that I said that out loud, but a lot of times, you know, somebody with the training and the skills can get this fracture repaired pretty quickly. And let's face it, they're young animals. They have an entire life ahead of them. The complication rate with these fractures uh, repair tends to be low. Having said that, one of the more common complications with the physeal fracture repair is that the pins will back out. I call that a, a pain to deal with, but not a major complication because they usually, those pins can be removed pretty easily. So don't let that be a negative as in, I don't want to go have this done because my pet might have an angular limb deformity, that leg might be shorter than the other, and the pins might back out. No, no, those are not really good reasons why not to spend the money and be referred. So seal fractures, excellent prognosis with surgical repair, and in the hands of a trained surgeon, these, these are very doable, very repairable fractures.